Hey guys, welcome to the final episode of Healthify Me Live Nutrient Series. And the last two weeks we were discussing about carbs and fiber. And this week uh, uh, we are going to see about uh, another uh, very vital nutrient called protein. You all must have heard about protein and uh, you must be more curious also. I can understand that and let's get into that. Before that, let me introduce myself. I am Kamla, Senior Dietitian from Healthify Me. Okay, so what is protein and what it is all about, right? Uh, so uh, protein is nothing but uh, it's a macronutrient and it gives energy. Apart from that, it has got very other various functions in our body and important role to play in our body. Okay, so what does it exactly do? Where all it is present in our body? So protein is present in your enzymes, in your enzymes are used in digestion of all the foods, whatever you eat, right? So enzymes are made up of protein and what all the things in our body are made up of protein, your hormones, your uh, muscles, your tissues, your nail, your hair and all your organs in your body, your antibodies, your blood cells, each and every component in your body is made up of protein. So now you can imagine how protein plays a very vital role in your body and deficiency of protein, what it can lead to, right? So all the system will get disturbed completely. So that is why uh, we always should focus on good amount of protein in your diet. Obviously, I will talk about requirement in the later stages to come. Okay, so now um, before actually talking about the sources and quality of protein, let me give a brief introduction about amino acids, right? Uh, how amino acid is related to protein? It is nothing but all amino acids are joined together to form a complete protein structure. So in our body, protein is present as various, uh, um, you know, in structures, right? Your muscle uh, protein is in different structure, your blood protein is in different structure. So it is all made up of amino acids, like how bricks form a house, the similar way, amino acids molecule join together to form a protein, protein uh, structure. So now, where do we get amino acid from? From the food what we eat, right? So you all know the sources of protein, like there are vegetarian sources of protein and there are non-vegetarian sources of protein as well. For the vegetarians, it's little difficult to get the high quality protein, whereas the non-vegetarians get high quality protein uh, without any uh, difficulties, right? So coming into the veg sources, um, you get protein from any kind of dals, uh, let it be thur dal or moong dal, which we used for dal or making sambar, or it can be dal paratha or, you know, any, which, any form of dal gives protein and any kind of bean varieties, let it be a kidney beans or a double beans or any seed types, right? Like a, a chia seed seeds or flax seeds or pumpkin seeds and nuts like almonds, walnut, cashews. So all these nuts, seeds, dals, lentils, every, every, all these are all the sources for the vegetarians. Apart from that, the another uh, protein source for the vegetarians is the cereals, right? But the quantity of protein present in the cereals is comparatively little lesser than present in the dals and pulses. Uh, let's say for example, if a, uh, you know, you can say double the amount, right? Like uh, the protein content of uh, dals, if it is around uh, 15 to 20 percent uh, for 100 grams, and then probably the protein present in the cereals will be around, you know, 8 to 10 percent in that way. Okay, so uh, what are all the other uh, high quality protein sources for the vegetarians is mainly soya products, right? So the soya products has got all the essential amino acids. So now what is essential amino acids, right? As it, I was talking about amino acids, there are two types. One is essential and the other one is non-essential amino acid. Essential amino acids are something where your body cannot produce it and you have to necessarily take it from the food sources. Whereas non-essential amino acid is something your body, which means your liver is a manufacturer and the liver can produce an uh, amino acid from the other sources, right? Okay, so now uh, to get a high quality protein, uh, the essential amino acid should be present in the particular food in the right combination. That defines the quality of protein where I have written here, quality, right? What is the high quality protein? People always say you have to eat a high quality protein after a workout. Why people end up taking eggs or chicken uh, uh, post workout and not, you know, um, uh, sprouts uh, comparatively or dals? So no, nobody eat, uh, drinks a cup of dal after a a heavy workout, right? So the reason being the quality of uh, protein uh, differs from veg to non-veg sources, right? Why is that quality differs? That is because the 
amino the essential amino acid which i was talking about that will one or two essential amino acids will be lacking in the vegetarian sources any vegetarian source you take apart from soya products uh, soy and soya products like tofu or soya milk um, like you know um, either one amino acid or other amino acid will be lacking let's say if you take a cereals if one amino acid a is lacking in in pulses amino acid b will be lacking apart from that all other essential amino acid will be present so how to make the vegetarian sources of protein uh make it how how to make it more high quality protein for the vegetarians right you don't have to worry about it so what you have to do is when one essential amino acid lacking in a particular food it is called as an incomplete protein which i have mentioned here whereas if all the amino acids present in the right composition and combination in a particular food it is called as a complete protein right so how vegetarians can get a complete protein very simple amino acid a is lacking in cereal amino acid b is lacking in pulses just club it both so you get all amino acids in one go right so that is why we nutritionists insist that take protein source with every cereal of whatever you take so that the missing amino acids will be compensated uh, i can give you one example like if you are a person who always eat roti and uh, take a uh some palya sabzi like for example lady's finger uh dry sabzi you are taking with roti uh that is a very incomplete protein so what does incomplete protein mean your absorption of protein will not be good uh and then the utilization of protein will not be good and uh, the body will be lacking in its function right then which means the no use of we taking the protein so i would advise along with the uh, roti and along with the um uh, uh, lady's finger uh, dry sabzi you can add one more dal or add sprouts to it so that one veg cereal and one pulses join together to form a complete protein or if not with one vegetable and one cereal you can always have a a uh, cup of curd which will also solve your purpose if not add nuts to the cereals right in any which way so if you cannot make it in a proper combination always make sure lunch you eat uh, curd uh, to get a because milk has got all essential amino acids in place right so you don't have to worry about the combination so people who are vegans then definitely the combo has to be there in every meal right so for the breakfast when you start with always you have a cereal and you have a protein source it can be a dal paratha or a paneer paratha or uh, it can you can have a nuts if you are using a poha then add some peanuts to the poha to make it complete so if you actually look into it all the traditional dishes let it be kichdi or idli or dosa always comes in the combination of cereal and a dal in it right so we all don't know the reason why we are doing it but we have been following it the reason is to make it as a complete protein we just need to follow whatever we have been doing just be very conscious in whatever you are taking that's about it right okay so that is about the complete and incomplete protein and how much does one require what is the requirement of protein for someone right so the protein requirement varies for one person to other person so uh, what the guideline says the minimum for maintain the existing muscles in your body so how much of muscle percentage you have to maintain that if you are an average working person not into any hard work hard working or heavy uh, gymming or uh, endurance pose if you are not involved in for a day to day life to maintain the existing muscle the requirement is around 0.8 to 1 g per kg body weight if you are a 100 kg person then 80 to 100 grams that is what is the requirement right that is the minimum requirement to maintain the existing muscles of yours right so what will it vary or it will become constant which means definitely it will not be constant it will vary as per your physical activity level let's say for example uh, in case if you are uh, um, uh, lifting weights what exactly happened right so people uh, who in who are involved in muscle uh, building who are looking for hypertrophy which is nothing but a building your muscles they they'll be focusing on a high protein diet throughout the day so the reason being when you lift your weight heavy weight there is a microscopic wear and tear of the muscle cells happening so you lift a weight you damage your muscles voluntarily and you have to take protein within half an hour post your workout for the proper recovery to start right so it's not about taking a protein in your diet right it's not about any time you can have so probably if your requirement can be 100 grams it doesn't mean you can take 100 grams any time if you are working out it is mandatory for the proper recovery to start immediate recovery it should be within half an hour please note it down right it can be immediate or 15 minutes or 20 minutes but it should be within half an hour and the protein you take should be of a complete protein i told you for the non vegetarians it can be egg or chicken and for the vegetarians uh, if you are if you eat uh, 
milk and milk products and that will be the ideal choice if you are a complete vegan then go for a combination of cereals and a pulse combination it can be in the form of a smoothie probably oats and uh, um, uh, you know almond milk uh, uh, together added as a shake uh, can be a, a vegan protein source and you get a peanut curd also available you can have it if not you can go for a uh, if at all if you are not able to meet the daily requirement then the best app would be to go for a supplement uh, and again if you are not interested in whey being a vegan then you can go for a other supplement uh, uh, like a pea protein which is made from the vegetarian sources of protein or rice protein which is made from the vegetarian sources of protein right so some people are little skeptical about the protein supplement again i would uh, deviate here to talk about little more about it right so when your requirement is about 100 grams right Right? and uh, if your diet for the whole day is giving only 50 grams then definitely to cover up the deficit you have to take the remaining 50 grams has to come from the supplement right so you cannot say no supplements are bad bad for the liver i don't take it i don't are in, i'm not interested in it which means accordingly you have to decrease your intensity don't lift weight don't take supplement right but if you are able to cover the daily requirement of 100 grams through natural diet there is nothing like that you can go ahead but if there is a deficit because of practical difficulties or because of uh, some kind of uh, some because of some reasons you are not able to make up the daily requirement then to cover up the deficit you have to go you can go in for a supplement right always there is nothing wrong uh, it's it's like example if somebody is anemic if doctor is recommending an iron tablet you have to take it if not you end up in deficiency the same way when you are doing a same way when you are doing a heavy workout exercises lack of supplement or lack of protein what it does whichever muscles you are working on the injury micro tear happens right the exact role of protein is when the damage happens within half an hour if you take a protein source it works on repair process right the basic function of protein is repair maintenance and growth okay so when the repair is not happening you end up losing the muscles which are you are utilized on that particular day you are doing a bicep your bicep muscle will go for a toss without meeting the requirement of protein for the day or missing out the time on the post workout after the workout after uh, finishing the bicep workout right so that is why protein plays a very important role and the requirement to, how much to take is also very vital so i have told you about the minimum requirement for a basic person again this varies if somebody is involved in uh, heavy muscle exercises uh, then their requirement is somewhere around uh, 1.2 to 1.7 grams of protein per kg body weight right so that is again in, in, you know depends upon the intensity of exercises how much ever you do the best way to uh, do is to start with 1.2 gram per kg body weight and after that every frequently on a cyclic basis keep checking your body composition analysis to know whether you are retaining your muscle or you are losing your muscle right the moment you got to know that your muscle loss is happening in spite of doing strength exercises which means you are lacking in the required amount of protein then you have to increase the protein to the next level right so whenever when there is an increase in the intensity of workout or when you are increasing the weights of your uh, workout then definitely there should be a simultaneous increase in the quantity of protein how much ever you, 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 you have to consume on a daily basis right so that is about the requirement of protein and what about the endurance exercises like you know is, is it protein is extra is required only for the muscle building people no even people who are into any kind of endurance like um, like it can be a group sports or it can be a marathon or a football or a cricketer where they are on the ground on a long run they also need high amount of protein but not like an, uh, a hypertrophy but then it's about 1.2 to 1.5 gram of protein they can have depends upon the need right to prevent the muscle loss happening so in case why the muscle loss happens in case if you like, let's say for example if your requirement is 50 grams you end up taking 25 grams why there should be a muscle loss the reason being as i told in the beginning protein is not only for muscles it's about your hormones enzymes and blood cells and hairs and nails so your body will compromise your muscle muscle is the storage form of protein so whenever there is a deficit in the diet your muscles will break down to release the protein and that is being used up by the for the other functions so what will happen you end up losing your muscles right so that is why you should understand the protein plays a very important role on maintaining the whole body functioning on a uh, very well level right 
So that is about the requirement. So we saw about the functions, amino acid sources, quality, and what is complete and incomplete protein and the requirement. And other important thing to talk about protein is the uh, what protein is good, what protein is bad, right? So there are certain cooking methods also which decides the uh, good protein and bad protein. And also a lot of researchers and scientific uh, you know proofs have shown that um, the red meats or uh, any protein which is combined with the saturated unhealthy fat. The WHO says the guidelines of 8% of saturated fat throughout the day, but any kind of red meats always comes with too much of saturated fat, right? So lean portions of proteins are always good for the non-vegetarians, right? Too much of saturated fat, always there is a chance of heart diseases, right? That is one thing you have to keep in mind. So other thing about the protein is the water requirement, okay? So whenever you're increasing the water content in your diet, make sure, protein content in your diet, make sure your water intake also equally high. Otherwise, what will happen? Whenever the protein is getting used up for the other functions in the body, uh, it releases the acids in the body, which has to be eliminated from your body, right? The waste products from the uh, byproducts of protein metabolism, you can say that it has to be eliminated from the body. So kidney plays a very vital role in eliminating the byproducts of the protein metabolism, the end product of protein metabolism. So if you are not taking enough water when you are especially on a high protein diet, what happens? The kidney undergoes a struggle. It has to struggle to eliminate the waste product via urine. So the urine will be concentrated. It has to eliminate more of uh, waste. Uh, but then what happens? The water intake in the body is less. So what will happen? Uh, accordingly the you know the it it just concentrate it will become concentrate and there is a chances of kidney stones uric acid stones happening also and on a long run kidney damage also is possible this is when you are on a high protein diet and a very low water intake in case if you are having so be very conscious about the water intake so make sure when you are passing an urine the color of the urine is always very pale to make sure you are adequately hydrated when you are on a high protein diet so that is one important point and another uh, important thing about the good uh, you know whether the protein is good or not is the cooking method right so uh, the there are some research which says that there are um, you know bad hydrocarbons or acyclic hydrocarbons are produced here. when you grill the uh, uh, protein uh, non veg meat when you grill the meat at the very high temperature okay so grilling a non veg at a meat at the very high temperature leads to carcinogenic production, nothing but cancer inducing products getting produced in it, which might on a long run leads to cancer. Again, which might don't get panic. Okay. So the prevention is always better than cure as you all know. So it doesn't mean that you have to completely avoid grilling. Steaming is much better than frying uh, and you know, boiling is much better option uh, for cooking. And if you are grilling, then always I would advise you to uh, pre-cook it in the oven or um, you know, lightly saute it before, uh, you know, grilling it. If not, if you're directly grilling, make sure you're grilling on a low temperature till the meat is completely cooked and not on a very high temperature, right? Okay, so I think I've covered most aspects of protein and uh, in case if you have any further doubts or questions, always you can, you know, uh, put it down so that we can answer as much as possible to you guys and hope you enjoyed the, uh, you know, nutrient series till now about carbs, fiber and protein and uh, uh, that must be, that must have definitely benefited you and you can always, uh, you know, tell us your suggestions and queries so we can help you out on that and thanks for watching till now and uh, uh, until then it's Kamla signing off thank you